Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Great to see you this day. Annie, thank you again for that lovely uh, prelude. Uh, we're glad that you're here on this 4th of July weekend. We pray that it's been a good one for you so far and that you've been able to relax a little bit and, um, and especially enjoy the, the, uh, the time off. And, um, but this is a good place to be as well. Uh, God is going to come again with his gifts of grace and his love for each one of you. And then you'll leave fortified and ready to spend the rest of this weekend uh, with a restful heart and with joy in your heart as you uh, praise God. Um, we do want to remind you that at the end of the service, you can pick up uh, copies of the announcements. They're on the tables at the north and the south exits. Uh, and also, if you'd fill out a white attendance card and let us know that you were here today, we'd appreciate that too. If you have a prayer request, write that on there. Uh, Pastor Kroom is on vacation this week. Uh, but he and I do like to get your prayer request to be able to pray along with you. So please jot those down on that card. We'll begin with our opening prayer. So let's stand and we'll pray. We join our voices together. Grant us, O Lord, to hear your voice and in hearing your voice to love your word and in loving your word to do your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the Lord richly bless our worship today. Enter into the presence of our God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. 
the true light that gives light to every man, was coming into the world. To all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. For sinful words and deeds. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy. For things we have done and things we have left undone. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy. For lack of love and lack of faith. Jesus is the Lamb of God, and through his death and resurrection, he takes away the world's sin. Praise God for his unlimited patience and generous love. In him, we are forgiven and free. Receive this forgiveness in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I lift up my eyes to you, to you whose throne is in heaven. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us, for we have endured much contempt. We have endured much ridicule from the proud, much contempt from the arrogant. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, your almighty power is made known chiefly in showing mercy. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we may be called to repentance and made partakers of your heavenly treasures. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Be seated now as we hear God's word for us this day. Good morning. The Old Testament reading today comes from Ezekiel chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. They will know that a prophet has been among them. He said to me, Son of man, stand up on your feet, and I will speak to you. As he spoke, the Spirit came into me and raised me to my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. He said, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their fathers have been in revolt against me to this very day. The people to whom I am sending you are obstinate and stubborn. Say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, and whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are a rebellious house, they will know that a prophet has been among them. <clears throat> the epistle lesson comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 10. My grace is sufficient for you. I must go on boasting. Although there is nothing to be gained, I will go on to visions and revelations from the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, but God knows, was caught up to paradise. He heard inexpressible things, things that man is not permitted to tell. I will boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself. 
except about my weaknesses. Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool, because I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain, so no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say. To keep me from becoming conceited because of these surpassingly great revelations, there was given me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This is the word of the Lord. Let's rise now for the reading of the Holy Gospel, which we find this day in St. Mark chapter 6. Jesus left there and went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things, they asked? What's this wisdom that has been given to him that he does Uh, that he even does miracles. Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Are his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, only in his hometown, among his relatives, and in his own house is a prophet without honor. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their lack of faith. Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village, calling the twelve to him. He sent them out two by two and gave them authority over evil spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra tunic. Whenever you enter a house... Stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, shake the dust off your feet when you leave as a testimony against them. They went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let's confess our Christian faith with the words from the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Be seated now as we sing our sermon hymn.
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day. Webster's Dictionary defines the word amaze as to fill with great surprise or sudden wonder. Watch this video for an example of what I'm talking about. Yeah! If you weren't sure, that's our congregational president, <laughs> Logan Hall, who's just a little amazed that the Suns are actually going to be playing in the NBA Finals. As you could see, his kids were amazed at Daddy's amazement, and Haley was simply amazed at what's the big deal? It's a basketball game. It's a sports game. It's nothing. That's amazement, though. Um, in the Concordia Self-Study Bible, or as one of my professors used to say, the Bible that studies itself, we didn't laugh either when he said that, but <laughs> it says that there are two times in Scripture where Jesus was amazed. Now, one of those times you will know the story about Jesus and the healing of the, of the centurion's servant. You, you might recall that, that Jesus was approached by um, some of the Jewish religious leaders, and they told him about the centurion. He had been very good to them, very supportive of what they were doing, and the centurion had a servant who was ill. And the centurion wanted to know if Jesus would come and heal this servant. And Jesus said, yes. So they begin walking to the centurion's home, and, and before they get there, the centurion sends a messenger, and the messenger says, Jesus, if you just say the word, I know that my servant will be healed. And that's where we find an example of Jesus' amazement. In fact, the way St. Luke describes it, when Jesus heard this, he was amazed, and turning to the crowd, following him, he said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. In other words, among his own people, Jesus had not seen the kind of faith displayed by the centurion. Well, that was one time when Jesus was amazed. But now we have in our gospel lesson today a rather amazing moment, because it's Amazing because the rejection of Jesus by his hometown of Nazareth. Now, you would have thought that they would have rolled out the red carpet for Jesus, given him a hero's welcome. The, 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 Naz, the Nazareth Times would have had a banner headline, Local Boy Makes Good, because Jesus is coming to him. And surely they have heard what Jesus has been up to, how he raised the... Uh, uh, the daughter of the synagogue ruler back to life after she was dead and all the healings that he had done, the hope and the, the joy that he had given people, the, the teachings that, that were so unlike anything they heard in the synagogue. Why, it was, should have been an exciting thing for them to have had Jesus come. But that's not quite how it worked out. Instead, even his own family did not receive him. They were amazed about what they were hearing about Jesus. Actually, a better word was astonished. They're, they're asking themselves, how is it that he does these great things? And maybe you can understand how they felt if you had lived in Nazareth for a period of time. Because after all, 
He was Joseph's son. He was the son of the carpenter. And he's Mary's boy. And there's nothing special about Mary. And he's got brothers and sisters. We know who they are. It's no big deal. According to St. Luke's account of this incident, when Jesus told the Nazarenes that he was the fulfillment of God's promise of sending a Messiah, which they should have received with joy, they became offended at him. Actually, they went bonkers, and they intended to throw Jesus over a cliff and kill him. But it was not his time yet to die. And so with his divine power, Jesus walked right through them untouched. Now, if we could turn the clock back 2,000 years, and you and I had been in Nazareth that day, It sure would have been different, wouldn't it? We would have welcomed Jesus with the the kind of reception that he should have received. We would have given God all the praise and glory for having sent his son to, to come into this world. We would have had our hands up high thanking God for keeping his promise of sending a Messiah after the world had been plunged into sin and darkness in the Garden of Eden. And we would have been saying to Jesus, yes, we'll follow you wherever you go. No questions asked, Jesus. We will do whatever you ask of us. We would have done that right. Oh, maybe, maybe not. Maybe we would have thought twice about all of that. Now, now here's why I say this. For example, Jesus comes to us in worship. Every Sunday, he comes among us. Do we receive him in worship with great joy and excitement? What is it? Just heart ready to burst to come into this place to worship? Or, or do you see the, hear the alarm clock go off sometimes on Sunday morning and you think, well, I, I guess it's time to get dressed and go to church. How many of us take the time each day for a period of Bible study so we can learn more and more about Jesus and continue to to follow his word? Jesus comes to us in his Holy Supper. But do we always take the time to examine ourselves, to admit that, yes, I am not a perfect person. I have broken God's commands. I really need the gifts that he brings into, that he gives in his body and blood. Or, Or do we just... Kind of get in line when invited. What about our prayer life? Jesus commands us to pray. He says, I am interceding for you at the right hand of the Father. But, but do we get lackadaisical sometimes with our prayer life? Have you ever done this where you uh, promised yourself you'll pray in the morning, but then, man, you know, you get a late start and you've got so many things to do. And you say, I'll pray at lunchtime. And then lunchtime comes and So does the thought of praying with Jesus. Or how about our witness? Do we take advantage of the opportunities that God gives us to to tell people about Jesus? Or do we find ourselves sitting silent when we're in a crowd of people who make outrageous and unfair statements about Jesus or the church or faith? You know, there are times when we would have to admit that that our faith life is kind of Nazarene-like. And that's kind of a fearsome thought when you consider that Jesus' own family and friends treated him in such a terrible way when he returned his hometown. Well, when that visit was all over with, what happened next? Mark tells us, he says, Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village. Did Jesus leave Nazareth in disgrace? Did he give up and quit because his family and friends rejected him? The answer is no. And that is good news for each one of us. Because it shows us something, my friends. It shows us that Jesus never stops reaching out to us. He never withholds his grace when we really need it. He never stops calling us to be his, even in those times when we might feel unworthy of his love. What an amazing Savior we have. And this Sunday, 
Jesus brings to us the same message that he brought to the people in Nazareth 2,000 years ago. He proclaims to us that he is the Messiah, the Savior of the entire world. He's the only one who has kept all of God's commands perfectly, and he does it for you. He's the only one who was able to shoulder the burden of our sin and suffer the punishment on the cross that we should have received. He's the only one worthy of our complete honor and worship because really no one loves us the way Jesus loves us. This is no ordinary carpenter masking around, masquerading around as a Messiah. Jesus, as an ordinary man, could have never paid the penalty for our foolish acts and our, in, our indifferent attitudes, but instead, because he is who he is, we are forgiven. We're forgiven of those times of uninspired worship and indifference to Bible study, complacency toward his holy stupper, and indifference to witnessing our faith to others. And in his resurrection, Jesus provides for us the full uh, extent of his victory. He brings us the reassurance that real grace and hope are ours because of him. Because, now think about it, could an ordinary man from Nazareth lay down his life, die, and then take that life back up again? Much to the consternation of the devil? No. What an amazing Savior we have. So amazing that the Father and the Son sent to us the Holy Spirit, and through the Spirit's motivating power, we find joy and excitement in our worship, in wisdom and understanding, in our Bible study power, in our prayer life, and confidence to, to witness to others. With the Spirit's help, we see Jesus as who he really is, not just someone who works with wood, but as a Savior who proclaimed the message of peace and salvation with God. And now that he has given us that gift, he encourages us to share it with others. You know, perhaps the saddest words in our, our reading for today are, are these. And Jesus was amazed at their lack of faith. The second time that we are told that Jesus is amazed about something it's interesting because we know from our study of Scripture that there were those in Nazareth who ultimately came to faith and to trust in Jesus Christ. For example, two of his brothers, James and Jude, became leaders in the early church. But I wonder how many of those people who were there that day in the synagogue never came to believe that Jesus is the promised Messiah. How many of those never saw Jesus for anything other than just an ordinary guy from Nazareth. But for you and me, Jesus makes it possible for us to recognize who he really is. And he has given us this amazing gift of faith to realize that his baptism is our baptism. His word of forgiveness is our word of forgiveness. And his body and blood in the Lord's Supper is the guarantee that heaven's gates are not locked for us, but they stand wide open. And a Savior who is there ready to receive us, just like he has received those who have preceded you and me into glory. I understand that there were hundreds of people at the airport waiting for the sons to arrive after their amazing victory the other night. <clears throat> Um, and, and you really have to kind of admire those people. I mean, you know, it's, it's still, what, 90, 95 degrees at night, 100 degrees? They're down there standing in the heat waiting for a basketball team to come back. That's amazing, right, Connie? That's just a dumb sports game. <laughs> I think that... It's too bad the people of Nazareth didn't welcome Jesus in the same kind of way. But, you know, we can be different. 
We can be different. We gather in this place and we can welcome the Savior. He brings to us such wonderful gifts like the forgiveness of all of our sins, the promise that He is going to be with you and me, especially when life isn't so easy. He is going to be along our side. He'll see us through whatever it is. He promises that he not only hears our prayers, but he answers them. And he's going to do it in a way that's best for us. And he has made this wonderful, wonderful promise that one day you and I will join him in that mansion that he has prepared for us. You know, it's only one word to describe Jesus for us, and that's amazing. What an amazing Savior we have. Amen? Amen. May the peace of God that passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds through faith in Jesus Christ, our amazing Lord and Savior. Amen. Um, I do want to remind you very quickly that the uh, offering plates are at the doors as you leave today. Please put a white attendance card in there and let us know that you were there or, or here with us today. And again, if you have a prayer request, please let us know about that as well. All right. Let's stand for prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, your Son endured rejection in this world. Lead us through a hostile world that shows no honor to you or your wisdom. Do not let us lose heart. Steal us for opposition and strengthen our faith to stand on your word and your word alone. Lord, in your mercy... Heavenly Father, open our hearts and minds to generously share what we have with one another, with our neighbors, and with those ministries and agencies that offer help and relief. Especially we ask that you bless the rescue efforts taking place in Florida and that your comfort and help be given to those who mourn and suffer. Lord, in your mercy. O Holy Spirit, Heal our brothers and sisters in Christ and all those who call out with faith in their time of need. Have mercy upon all those that we silently name in our hearts. Grant healing, peace, and comfort to each one according to your gracious plans. Lord, in your mercy. Oh God, as we pray for the sick and suffering, help us to remember to pray for their caregivers too. Whether it be in the hospital, care facility, or at home, enable caregivers to be your hands and heart to those in need. Give strength and faith to those who lovingly help and assist others. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive now with believing hearts the benediction and promise of your Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give to you his peace. Amen. Amen. Let's uh, remain standing for this uh, closing hymn.
please be seated. We have a couple of uh, slides to share with you, and then we'll have you on your way. The uh, exercise class, notice this the same slide we had last week. So we are going to begin um, July 7th, 10 o'clock in the morning, over in the fellowship hall. Plenty of room to spread out. The air conditioning will be on. Come exercise as we get back into the swing of things. Also, um, we have a four-week video Bible series coming up that's going to start on July 11th. It'll take place during the Bible class hour, 930, uh, 9, 9.30 to 10.30 in room 23. This is called Households of Faith. It is uh, produced by Lutheran Hour Ministries. It's a, a really cool Bible study that will help all of those to attend to better engage their community, uh, their neighborhoods, with uh, uh, the, the love of Jesus Christ. Uh, Gail is extremely excited to teach this class. He invites you to come. And so again, that will start on July 11th, next Sunday, room 23930, be there. Uh, we think that you will uh, really be blessed by this time. I, and I think that's all we have. Be, uh, uh, please be sure to pick up the announcements as you leave today. We uh, hope that you have a great 4th of July holiday and a relaxing afternoon, whatever it is you decide to do. And uh, I think that shall do it. So, AJ, the last slide. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. We'll see you in the narthex. Have a blessed week.